So sometimes we get people asking why they have low working pressure on their mini reel when they're operating a water jetting machine. Um, so typically you would want uh, 4,000 plus PSI working pressure depending on what machine you've got. So if you're noticing pressure less than that down into the 2,000 or 1,500 PSI, uh, there's a couple of things that we can look at. One of the most common being, if you're using a quick connector on your mini reel, um, if the O-ring is missing out of the end of the quick connector, um, you can see down in there, there's a little O-ring there near the ball bearings. So if that's perished or missing, uh, that can dramatically affect the pressure because when you've got your nozzle down the drain, um, you can't see it when it's down the drain, but you've got a leakage happening at the back of the quick connector rather than pushing the pressure down into the head. So that's gonna um, make your, your working pressure much less than what it should be. Another reason we see low working pressure is that you could have blocked jets in your head. So what that does is it'll, it'll make your jetter go into bypass rather than sending water out your jets. Um, so it's a good idea just to have a tip cleaner with you and just make sure that your, your jets in your, in your nozzle are all clear. So you've got one in the front there. Now this nozzle has three in the rear. So you can just make sure those jets are not blocked up with anything because that will um, overpressurize your system and then put, cause your jetter to go into bypass, which will give you low working pressure. So one of the other common reasons why we see low working pressure when you're operating a jetting machine is you could have a high pressure leak somewhere on your high pressure system. So that means from the mini reel through to your unloader valve. So a quick way to test to see if you've got any high pressure leaks in your system is to take the nozzle off your mini reel and then come and close your ball valve on your mini reel. Watch the gauge climb up to the PSI that's set on the jetter. Um, once it's gone up in, and gone into bypass, just make sure that the pressure is holding in that line and not getting away. So. If you notice the pressure has gone up to 5,000 psi and it stays on 5,000 psi, you don't have a pressure leak. But if this pressure starts to drop back um, and then you hear the unloader valve kick in and then the pressure goes back up, then it goes back into bypass, then it goes back down, unloader valve kicks in, that does mean you've got a high pressure leak somewhere from this fitting back to your unloader valve. So you would just trace it back, go to all the fittings on your reel, Go to all the fittings on your high pressure lines through to your unloader valve and just make sure there's no visible high pressure leaks. Um, so if you do notice a union that is leaking, you can obviously just tighten that up. Or if there's a, if there's a fitting that's leaking um, or a hose that's leaking and you need a hose re-end, you just get a new hose made at your local hydraulic shop. But how to test that is, as I've said, close off your mini reel, watch the pressure go up to the set pressure um, and make sure it holds it in that line. So if you notice the pressure dropping down and going back up and dropping down and going back up, that means there's a leak in your high pressure system somewhere and that will affect your working pressure when you're, when you're using your water jetter. So another thing that we need to look at when you've got low working pressure uh, when you're operating a water jetting machine is that your unloader valve could be not set correctly to the shut off pressure of your pump spec. So that's your unloader valve there which has the bleed going back to the water tank. So what that valve does is regulates the pressure. Um, so you want your pressure to be shutting off at the correct PSI of your pump spec. So on the pump, you'll have a plaque, you usually have a plaque that'll tell you the maximum PSI or your shutoff pressure. Um, the way to test what that's set to is to take the nozzle off your mini reel, um, let the water flow freely through the system, start to close this valve here, and watch the PSI climb on this gauge. And at the point where it shuts off, and goes into bypass, you want that to be set at the PSI on the maximum PSI on your plaque of your pump. So if that's 5,000 PSI and you're shutting off at 4,000 PSI, that's 1,000 PSI missing that your unloader valve is not giving you the performance that the pump needs to, to be an effective water jetter. So if you're missing 1,000 PSI at shut off, when you go to open your valve and start jetting, that's PSI you're gonna miss, be missing when you're, when you're operating your water jetter. So, to do a quick test on that, as I said, close off the mini reel valve, watch at what point it closes off. If you're down on PSI, you can adjust your unloader valve by winding that spring down. Um, that's your unloader valve there. People sometimes get mixed up with the unloader valve and the safety valve. This is your pressure regulator valve here. This one here is your safety valve. So that has water would exit out of here. If this pressure system overpressurizes, that's just a protection override for your pump, so there's no damage being done if it wants to go past the set PSI. So another thing to check when you're considering low working pressure is that you could have a blocked water filter. Um, that would usually be witnessed as well by your hoses shaking because you're drawing air through your, 
inlet system, um, which causes your pump to cavitate and suck air. So it's probably one of the less common reasons why you've got low pressure um, by itself. So, but if you've got low pressure and your hoses are shaking, that would most likely be the reason. So you'll see the water filter down here. Every jetter has one. And that must be checked. It is, should be part of your daily checks. This one here, you can see through the, the bowl, but the debris catches on the inside of the strainer. So doing a visual check from the outside is usually not good enough. So you would undo the water strainer. Make sure you've got your O-ring in your strainer, because if you don't and you put that back in, it will draw air through the system, which will cavitate the pump and also affect your working pressure. And just make sure your water filter is clean. So just flush that out with clean water, put it all back together, um, and then you're good to go. And one less common reason for low working pressure could be connected to your RPM of your engine. So if you haven't got a tachometer on your machine, you can take your jetta to a small engine mechanic or a, or a local mower shop. They should be able to put a tachometer read on the engine to give you the RPM, maximum RPM. Um, Typically with pressure pumps, especially the ones that we use with the Italian um, pumps, they run at a 1750 RPM to give you the preferred performance. And it's usually done through a two to one reduction gearbox off the back of the engine. So you would want your engine to run at typically 3500 RPM to 3600 RPM. So just to summarize what we've discussed now, um, the reasons why you could be experiencing low pressure. Um, we started off with looking at the quick connector to make sure that there wasn't any high pressure leaks coming from the back of the quick connector. Um, then we had a look at possibly block jets, so just making sure your jets are clear, clean out your um, jets with a tip cleaner. Then we had a quick look at possible high pressure leaks on your system, so we covered off that with doing a shut off pressure check um, to make sure you haven't got any high pressure leaks. Um, then we had a discussion about the unloader valve to make sure that's got the correct setting. Uh, we talked about the water filter to make sure you haven't got a blocked water filter. As discussed, that would usually be coupled with uh, shaky hoses if you've got cavitation in your pump. And then we had a quick talk about the engine RPM. So if you've watched this video and you're still unsure why you've got low pressure, just give us a call on 800 816 830 and one of our team would be more than happy to help you.